Sometimes what you'll find in this tall grass is just a little circle or an opening in the grass and you'll look down and there'll be a fawn inside of it. Sometimes there's nothing to cue in. You just happen to see kind of this spotted little football. And, uh, we're taking some basic measurements. So we're gonna weigh the animal. We're gonna look at hoof growth, look at the firmness of the hoof. We're gonna look at what sex it is. We're also gonna look at what's called the umbilicus see what condition it is, and all these things will kind of give us an idea of its age. And then we're going to go ahead and put ear tags in it. We'll put one in each ear, and then we're going to put a collar on. This is a fawn collar. This thing emits a beep or a pulse is what we call it. These things uh, are designed to expand. You can see that there's these pleats here that are sewn in, and this thread here is designed to degrade out in the elements. And as that animal grows, you know, as it stresses and puts pressure against those threads, it starts to expand and it pops one pleat at a time. And the reason you want to do that is so that it'll grow with the animal. And then eventually what will happen is you'll end up with something that looks like this. So these uh, collars will um, expand to this size. And again, these, this is at eight months to a year. This thing expands to this, this big. And then the very last set of threads, which are right here, will split and break off and then this will drop to the ground. And then what we're doing is trying to get information on this animal from the time it's born to the time it's huntable. And what we do is we follow that animal every day um, from the time it's born until August. We track and see if that animal is alive or dead and if it, if it has died, we go in, we collect as much information we can about what killed it. Was it hit by a car? Was it um, eaten by a predator? Was it hit by a haybine? Um, did it just starve to death? Was it abandoned? You know, what, what kind of situations are going on out there in the woods? And what that does is give us an idea of what survival rates are on these animals in different areas. We picked these two areas because they're uniquely different in terms of habitat. The northern forest has uh, big blocks of forest, very few roads in those areas. The eastern farmland region has lots of lots of farmland and uh, small woodlots. Not only are these habitats different, we're seeing that there's traumatic difference in results, at least in our first year of uh, information. So we have uh, a much higher predation rate in the north than we do in the east. The information they provide is, is, is interesting too uh, when you look at the mortality rates down south versus up north and uh, I mean it's essential for um, for managing our future deer populations. The hunting community could help in a lot of ways. They got a lot of unique opportunities. Uh, it's a lot of fun. They can come out with us and, and volunteer and they can be as active as they want. They can just sit in the background and take photos or they can get right in there with us and help us collect some information. It, it gives me a lot more respect for the, the, the job that the DNR has. I always would look at the numbers but never really knew where they came from. Once you volunteer and you realize the mechanics behind it, you know, they are really doing a lot. Um, are they doing it perfect? Well, I don't think anybody can do it perfect, but it, it does give me a lot more respect for the amount of effort and time that's spent in this resource. Setting up the collar to put on the animal and being right there, I mean, it's a really unique experience. It's rare that you get to be right there in the middle of it all and see what we're up to.